story time with the legendary Jerry. I am Jerry Clark, a.k.a. the legendary Jerry. This is my brother, New Face. And New Face, this brother right here, we have one-fourth of the almighty Goody Moby. The good die mostly, mostly over, over bullshit. bullshit. <laughs> <laughs> you take one all away. <laughs> our, our brother, Big Gip. What's up, Gip? What's up, King Man. Jerry? King, King Jerry. Jerry. See, hey, you know. hey, finally. You New get face. It. Finally, we get you on this one. Oh, right. man. Thank you so much, man. It was a test this morning. <laughs> I said, hey, man, I walked outside. I said, Lord Jesus. Hey, Long boy. John. I hey, turned boy. around and went back in there. As they say, that that Hulk, that motherfucking Hulk was out, man. Yeah, man. It's, it's not fall. It's winter. Hey, oh, boy. yeah, we back. <laughs> hey, man. Hey, Gip, to still see you here and rock, not just here, but you rocking and rolling, man. Y'all, I just saw y'all at the one music fest. Oh, yeah. Mm-hmm. And I remember when I, every time I see different stuff from, from from the Dungeon family, whether it's Outkast, Goody Mob, I think back to when I first saw y'all at that LaFace <laughs> showcase over at, Di- uh, what was it, Diamonds and Pearls? Mm-hmm. And I wow. said, yeah, yeah, nigga, we, damn, don't, damn. don't, don't see it. <laughs> you done took him back. <laughs> <laughs> he closed the eyes. Man. That's when that, that LaFace showcase, and I heard them records, man. Mm-hmm. I said, these niggas got some fucking hits, man. Man. And, and, and I'm, let me say this to the audience watching. And, and I, I want to preface by saying my personal, I have an upper echelon of albums, my mm-hmm. tier one. Mm-hmm. 50 years of hip hop, I have my personal list of what I think the greatest uh, rap albums are. Mm-hmm. My personal. So if y'all don't beat me up. Um, Aquemini, The Chronic, mm-hmm. uh, Jay-Z, The Blueprint 2. Mm-hmm. Of course, uh, all eyes on me. Yes, sir. Uh, ready to die. Mm-hmm. Uh, uh, the low end theory. Yes. And let me tell you, that motherfucking soul food new face. Mm-hmm. No, Gib, straight up, man. That hey, man, that album, man. When it when it came out, w- w- did y'all realize what a classic this shit would be? Twenty for damn, how many years? Damn, that was ninety five. Twenty, almost thirty years ago. Yeah, did y'all realize then when y'all was making that motherfucking man that this this shit is gonna be around forever, man? Um, we we didn't know at the time simply because again now during those times you didn't get to hear the albums or didn't get to hear the verses until the thing until the actual album was finished. Mm-hmm. So I um. After listening to to the first album, Outcast, Southern Play Arista Cadillac Music, I knew we sounded great together, all of us. Um, recording Soul Food was a different process because we recorded that album at Curtis Mayfield House. Yeah. So we was recording verses, and Reek then was just going in after we record and putting the actual songs together. So that's why you had so many verses where you know, Reek then would just let us rap for like 25, 30 bars mm-hmm. because they was like, we had so much to say then. Instead of cutting us off, they just let us go. And I think that's what really made Soul Food because they didn't put us, they didn't put no governor on the things that we could we could do and say on the album. So after it was over and after I heard it, it brought, it, 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 it brought, I was emotional because I knew that we had, tapped into something that was first of its kind. Yeah. Um, he and CeeLo sing. A lot of that stuff was, uh, that's how I met CeeLo, uh, how I noticed him. I knew him before, you know, music, because my bro- he used to hang with, my, my brother used to hang with his cousin, Floaty, so I met him. And when I met him. Shout out to Big Floaty, hey, man. Floaty. <laughs> and when I met him that night, he came to my house, he was Floaty. He was calling him by his street name, like this chicken head. And I was like, oh, okay. And and that's how I knew him as chicken head. So me and Cujo was already running together. Timo, we already running together. So one day when I went over to Peyton Park, I'm over morning my partner's house, Cujo was rapping against uh CeeLo. And that was the first time I noticed that he actually did music. Mm-hmm. And um he stepped back and started singing. <laughs> and I was like, <laughs> I never saw that before. You and I, and I ran back to the dungeon. I was like, yo, Reek Ray, 
like this this kid on the west side. He, he's special. And uh, I think once we got CeeLo, the album uh, really became whole. Yeah. Because uh, what people don't realize is that me, Timo, and Cujo, we graduated he, together. Maze High. Shout out Maze, Maze High. Maze High. And uh, CeeLo, he dropped out in the ninth grade. But he was always He around. was younger. CeeLo was a little younger than y'all. Too, yeah, right? yeah. Um Dre, Big, and CeeLo the same age. And okay. um, me, Timo, and Cujo are the same age. So we all came out, me, you, Willie Knight, and all them came out in 90. Yes. And we, Big and all them came out in 92, 93. Uh, almost like 94. Like, nah, I think 93. 93. Yeah. My brother's three years younger yeah. than me. Tri-City. So, you know, just watching the whole process and, and what we came up with after the first two albums, I just knew that we had did something that it was going to be remembered in time. Yeah. You so know. when it was the Lumberjacks, East Point Chain Gang, mm -hmm. and that came together. And that was that was amazing, too, because, see, really, um, Goody Mob, Cujo, everything comes from a group called Six Sense, which was me and Yoda in a group with a girl mm -hmm. named Angel D. Ray who, Murray, right? Yep, mm -hmm. from Organized. Angel D was signed to Ichiban. That's the first record, professional record you ever heard Gip on, you mm -hmm. know? So with that being said, I went from Angel D album to the next album was Parental Advisory. PA. PA, KP. PA, KP. KP. They, they uh, met Pebbles. Pebbles was the first one that really, really took us in as a crew. I think if it wasn't for, for Pebbles, I don't think we would have ever made it to L.A. Hmm. So, um, yeah, she shout out to Pebble. She was the gatekeeper. Man. She was, man. She's uh, a bright mind, too, man. Pebble's a smart. She was a great uh, business mind. And I think, um, after having that experience, I did dope stories on that album. With uh, that was the first time I put Pimp C mm -hmm. on one of our records. And, um, from there, it was just, um, we had got the confidence of, of understanding who we were. So now it became easier to express where we wanted to go. Yeah. After the first album, Southern Players, Cadillac Music, and Soul Food, and we and, it, and both of those albums were so dynamic and so diverse that it just gave us a real playing field for the albums to come after that. We didn't. We, it was it was no ceiling that we couldn't break. You damn right it was. We tried everything on the first two albums. Yeah. And it looked new faces smooth and it's. When 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 Outkast came out, you saw Big and Dre, then you got Goody Mo B coming right after them. And when I tell you though, and Gip go laugh when I say this, they won the motherfuckers to try, man. Oh yeah, we had CeeLo on the show, and, and I remember we I think it was Clark, <laughs> Clark you know, it, was it the home, was a homecoming? It was either Clark or Morris Brown, mm -hmm. and a dude threw a water bottle on stage. New Faith, I was there. Oh, you was. <laughs> oh, I, it made the book. <laughs> oh, I, I think that's hey, my first New hey, Faith. New Faith. <laughs> hey, <story. laughs> hey, I think CeeLo might have jumped off the stage yep. first, and after that, hey, I said. I said, these, these, these niggas from Maze High. Man, yeah. hoe. <laughs> hey, you, ain't man. no hoe in them. <laughs> yeah, hey, um, hey, ain't no hoe in them. That boy yeah. just jumped wherever he thought the water bottle came I from. Said, boy. Boy, I, yeah. I said, boy, I said, I said, I said, these boys right here from Maze High, because you know, I went to school with the Cab County, so we always had that APL oh, yeah. birthday oh, yeah. I said, man. I said, that these motherfuckers from bougie ass May, they ain't no hoes. Yeah, we, 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 our class, we ain't really come with that. It, it was, uh, that's when the, I think the gunplay started with my class, so. Yeah. It was always like that, like because between y'all like, and between y'all and Frederick and Douglass, how yeah, it was y'all, like, always. Hey, that was we was talking about that too while we was at the uh, one, music one music fest, fest. talking to Carlos. He was like, "What y'all experience out here in Piedmont Park?" I was like, "Bro, we used to come out here every weekend to fight Douglas." Oh, oh wow! It was like oh, the no, outsiders. Yeah. It was hey, like bye. we would go meet up. <laughs> I, one side of the park will be Maze, one side will be wow. uh, Doug High, and we'll meet in the middle, and we'll just do some like some outsider stuff and fight. But you know what's so crazy come. to show you the growth of all this, give me new faith, is that a lot of them cats that, that were fighting, I done been out with some cats, older events like I, and I see, I be like, that was some nigga back that we used to fight. Yeah. Doug nigga with Maze. <laughs> <laughs> that just goes to show, this shit at the end of the day, man. <laughs> Doug, hey, Daryl. Hey, Ooh. everybody, man. Niggas and, just hanging out, man. And I'm going to tell you, Jay, Jay, like I tell a lot of people all the time, man, the east side is the nucleus for Atlanta. It, the east Boy, side. you better say that again, nigga. Was the place that I first saw Luke Skywalker. 
the first first saw Gucci what, crew. Sharon Showcase. Sharon Showcase, Gresham yep. Road. Yep. Like the South Side, we had to go to the East Side. And the Cater at that time had the best talent shows. Columbia. Wait, Columbia, if you didn't win Columbia High School talent show, you won the shit. You won the shit. And that's when I that's when Reek and Ray, Reek and Pat, that's when they was out here really, really dancing. Yeah. Really, really doing that thing. And uh, Atlanta was a different city then because it was always exciting because like I tell people all the time, like the first start of me in the hood was the girl from SOS band. She used to work at the, 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 the ready, I mean, the uh, record store in Greenbrier. At Peppermint. 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 And I remember like she gave me my first rap records. And then the next thing you know, the SOS, SOS band became everything in Atlanta. Mm -hmm. So that was my first, Kind of like knowing that somebody from the neighborhood could win. Yeah, and um, and that's big to, to, to be able to see that, especially when you're coming up in this in the game. It was it was everything, but and you know and and wasn't nothing bigger than Shadi to me at mm -hmm. that time, uh, because Toon was from the neighborhood. Yeah, and um, they're Ohio. Toon really was with Shadi, so to to watch him come over to the to the to the to the record stores with Theo over there. Shout and, out to Theo Hill. Oh, man. <laughs> That's my boy. I love Theo. Man. <laughs> he, we we really Theo, got you know educated. what the boy is like? Theo, yeah, my yeah. dog. I love you, Theo. <laughs> That's my dog, man. I love Theo. Like, Shout out to Theo, like boy. Tyson. <laughs> yeah. <laughs> hey, man, Gip, you know what I've been waiting to ask, man? Mm -hmm. And a lot of people do face, they don't know this. Mm -hmm. Is that at one point, y'all was beefing with the Wu-Tang. Yeah. Mm. And it almost turned into some real, like, street shit. Yeah. See, I was around then and I saw some shit happen at a couple of these music conventions. Mm -hmm. What 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 did that shit start? What and um, and where did it start and how did, I'm glad it ended. How did it end? Cuz I I from what I saw with my own eyes that it really was getting close to some real life street shit. Um uh I just think that um at those times, man, it was just it was everybody was just so full of aggression. And uh, Cujo was a different animal. Then. Boy, shh. You know Shout I mean? out to like, Cujo Goody, boy. He was, like, hey, he was I've the. I've heard. No, no, no. New face. Look, I've, <laughs> look, let me say this, man. And we, on, on a story time of Legendary Jerry, we don't condone, condone any violence. Right. But I've seen Mr. Willie Knight, a.k.a. Cujo Goody, one hit a quitter a lot of folks, bro. Yeah, bro. And when we say a different animal, man, he was a different animal. He, he was, was. But he one of the coolest, most good hearted, good spirited people. But, hey. Back then, yeah, but, night, but go ahead. I'm sorry. He'll uh, knock you out, though. Yeah, it was like what I. It was it was the meeting of uh, Cujo, myself, and Raekwon and Ghostface, and um, we the aggressors from our crew, you know. And we met it. We we met one time in uh in the Wendy's in New Orleans, and um, um, I just think that you know. When 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 bulldogs get into a, a kennel, I mean, like it, it is what it is. I mean, we we made eye contact, they made eye contact, and then it was like uh, it went there. But you know, um, the biggest thing about Wu Tang is that Rizzo reached out to me, and Rizzo was like, "Yo, come to New York and mess with me." Hmm. So I went and hung out in New York, and uh, I was there when No Dirty came home. And um, a lot of that stuff that was going on because me and RZA had really kind of like uh, started a, a, a relationship. So the things with Wu-Tang was that once we realized that we represented the same thing, I think that dissolved any kind of aggression towards yeah. each other. You yeah. know, it was just, we, once we realized that they were just as much as an outcast in New York as we was, mm -hmm. then we became allies. So... It was funny, like, Raekwon moved here first. Mm -hmm. He stayed in Mableton, around the corner from Pimp C, mm -hmm. you know. And um, it was like they put the Wu-Tang store up downtown yep. on Peace Street. Yep, right down Peace Street. Yep. And um, I think just from our communicating with them, if you think about it, Wu-Tang came and did more work here than anybody else. Mm -hmm. They did. Like, they put their store here and everything, you know. So that was because of our relationship and us being able to bond with them like, yo, we ask kids, we ask kickers too, so yeah. mm -hmm. we might well be friends. Yeah, because we we, hey, we can get a whole we can get a lot farther. Yeah, because yeah. and, and we and once they realized we was as deep as them 
at that time. They was like, oh, okay, yeah, them ain't the ones to play with. Yeah. You know what I mean? Mm-hmm. So we we let that be, and we uh, to this day, man, we got great relationships. You know, like that's good, man. Ghostface was always one of my favorites because of the way he. He did his Shout out his to thing. Ghostface Killer Boy, lyrically. And it had to be happy to see uh, the success of the Outkast record with Raekwon, School It on the Barbie. Like, that was one of their biggest commercial mm-hmm. crossover hits, and it fins so naturally, and it's probably because of that relationship. And after that, you know. That's what happened. Uh, Raekwon you did records, and then I did records with, with Rizzo on his first solo album. So, yeah, we we squashed our beef because That's we, good, we really felt like, man, we just— we just the the weirdos. We the outcasts. We so with knowing that, and then just looking at they crew at that time. Like, I mean, old Dirty was something else. You know what I mean? Yeah. Like he was, he was, he was a phenomenon by itself. So let me ask you, who would be the old Dirty of the Dungeon Family if there was if we were backbone? <laughs> he, look, he did not say it. <laughs> Shout out to my boy Shout back, boy. I love Bob. Yeah, that's a back. <laughs> back gonna got them. He gonna let these folks okay. know. <laughs> exactly. And you know what, Gip? He he got to come on the show because the last two times he was like, man, boy, you know, Jerry. I said, I said, all right. I said, back, boy. Like, I got it, man. You know, I, I I'm ready to come on. You know, I got some shit to say. I said. I said, but I, I get. I said it's time. So new fact, it's time for us to have no, back on that story hey, time. Back, with back. Back. That brother back came on. into the museum, Jerry. He said, "I ain't on that wall, new face. Why I ain't on that wall?" And I tell Dallas, I need to be on that wall. They got the dungeon. But he right though. I mean, hey. come on, man. He pulled over the ski mask. I said, "Wait, you can't, Dallas? Wait, hold on this backbone." He just came in with the ski mask. Yeah, hey, man. <laughs> L- lyrically, man, what he what he brought to the dungeon for backbone. He, hey, that nigga, that's fat man. face, man. It was, it was hip hop. Yep. He was hip hop. He was hip hop at his, his southern hip hop at his greatest. Yeah, you know? man. Um, you know, I I just think like anything. You know, a lot of my people be like, "Yo, where this person? Where this person?" And I tell them sometimes, man. Some people aren't built for the music business. They just built for the music. Yeah, you know. And um, some people can't emotionally like it's like you know like we guilt. Like I I've been up here, down here, up here, down. And and a lot of times it's not even up here, down here. It's when I feel like doing it. Mm-hmm. Like when you've had success in this um, and you've lost uh, personal space and just being a regular person, sometimes you have to lose it all to, to regain right. it all. You you have hey, to. Hey, I know from personal experience. You got to lose You got to get knocked down to the canvas. You know what I mean? Like and, um, to go through, you know, people don't understand like to drop. Uh, our third album and then get a call like, yo, LA just sold the face to Arista. To Arista and you got to understand like our whole system of how we dealt with people, how our records went out, it just changed overnight Mm -hmm. in the middle of our album. And the biggest record we ever had come out just out the gate. Like, you know, World Party sold 800,000 like two months. So it was like one of our biggest records that came out because of Get Rich to This, which our core fans at that time was not really like, I don't know. And, I, and we're about to get into that, too. I don't know, I, Gil, <laughs> but I'm like, <laughs> yeah, but then I went, but it was our biggest record on the West Coast. We had never had a record get on Rich the West Coast. Was? Yeah, it was our biggest record. Interesting. And, um, it was funny. You know, Power 105 called us, and it was funny, man. We did Get Rich to This, and... Backbone didn't come. He went to the Super Bowl. <laughs> so, yeah. Well, hey, well, look. You know hey, how that one went. Hey. <laughs> well, look, I'm, I'm going to say this. I'm going to say this, man. And I, 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 want, you, I, want, I want you to hear me out. Yep. As, as you my brother, but as a Goody Mob fan. Yes. From Soul Food to Still Standing, there was a, yeah, this is my opinion again, mm-hmm. my personal opinion as mm-hmm. a Goody Mob fan. There was a big drop off, man. Because them first two albums, bro. Maybe, talking about from maybe, here to there. Hey, man. Maybe, them, maybe go ahead. because uh, our whole third album was kind of like dissected and commercialized once the label got it. Um, we had a whole photo shoot that went missing uh, that was on. But I bet you they charged you back. Yeah, they did. Bet that, bet that, they did. did a whole photo shoot where we was on going into the next still standing 
and they didn't like the way we was promoting the third album. And that's when we started getting questions like, yo, y'all, y'all don't never had no girls. Like y'all don't, Y'all don't mess with girls when, when y'all oh, gonna start giving. Shit. Here we go. And it came Here straight from the man. You know what I mean? Yeah. So it's like, we like, okay. Okay, he's saying like, to go to another level, we have to figure out a way how to engage the popular section of music at that time. Mm -hmm. And um, if you look at World Party, it was an experiment of yeah, them trying to Make Goody Mob commercialized. Yeah, Gib. And, mm. and I, as a fan, I remember, man, I was, and I could say this to you, man, I, mean, I was I was disappointed, man, because I. Disappointed? I was living it. Man. I was, you know, we went New from. Face, the product, and then, and then lyrically, y'all was still there. I mean, yeah, of course, yeah, yeah. But the production, man, I was like, dang, is, is, re is organized? No, it's still doing the track. Like, what? Well, what well, um, well, on, 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 on some of that, we was letting DJ, DJ was getting in. Okay. You know, DJ the, was doing a lot of DJ. that stuff. And um, I think Reek them man was so bogged down at that time. Because well, they had just did a label deal. They did with, a label uh, deal. Yeah, had Kilo and all them over there. And Interscope. they did a song deal with Sylvia. So okay. they had a lot on So y'all wasn't on the top of the... No. Okay. No. It was it was damn them. We having to... uh get a better relationship with L.A. And then, boom, out of nowhere, L.A. sells the label, and then L.A. not even there no more. Now, we got an album that's out, a label that disappeared uh, on A whole Peace new Street. staff. That, right, right on Peace Street. Yeah, in the heart like, of your, like, like, and, like, and now you got to deal with a whole staff. And New York. In New York, out of all places. Now we got to deal with New York. So, us going to New York every time, Ariston never cared about Goody Mob. You know what I mean? They never cared about Goody Marvin in no kind of way. It was Outkast, TLC, and Tony Braxton on the walls. Yeah. I think Usher hadn't made it yet. Then they had was uh, on the way. Whitney Houston. Yeah, yeah, it was, yeah, I mean, they had, yeah. yeah it and was, that's amazing because that's who we heard. We went to go, they, they were, we're going to go see Santana, Co all see yeah. Clive. We went and seen Clive. He played us a Whitney Houston song and then turned around and said, Thank you. Good good to see y'all. Damn, I know, you, I know that made you feel very welcoming and as I was a group. just like, uh, Okay. Here it is again. But see, that's, I think that's always been the battle with Goody Mob. At the same time with CeeLo at that time saying, hey man, he ain't had the success of that Santana record. Mm -hmm. 15 million. So was he, was he throwing little hints that he was ready to bounce from the group? He already had said it while we was recording the album. So. How did y'all take that when he initially said that? How did he, how did he come to y'all and say, you know, shit, I, I want to jump out and do my own. He just was like, yo, Gip, like, uh, if this don't work, I want to go and do my thing. Uh, I want to go sing, mm -hmm. you know. Now, at that time, you know, it was it was like a blow to me. But at the same time, I had to, I had to understand and I had to, had to at least be honest to myself that the first time people heard Goody Mob, they heard this man sing. Same, yeah. Mm -hmm. So for him to want to go at this time when the labels disappearing, LA's leaving, then LA called me and CeeLo and was like, yo, I'm going to give you and CeeLo a solo deal. I got a solo deal and I went to New York. And um, I know LA get mad when I say this, but I don't care. Tell I love you too. But you know, it was just a trip because I sat down with L.A. and he was like, you need to do some records like Ludacris. And I was like, huh? Ludacris? Uh, I think that's my prototype. Yeah. Like, So you felt a sense of disrespect. I mean, shout out to Luda, no disrespect. No disrespect. Though, yeah. But it's like. He was like, I'm Big Gip and he yeah, Ludacris. Yeah. yeah, like, you wear a that that's my poach You wear big hair, that's my hair. You, wear, you talk about Cadillacs, I drove Cadillacs. Mm -hmm. So, it was kind of like, uh, 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 you know what? I don't even want to put an album out on Airs to LA. Just let me go. Cause oh, shit. If it's going to be like this, because I see that at the end of the day, it's going to be me against CeeLo. So you can't do that brother versus I, brother. I knew that. I said, if I put an album out here, good and all done forever. I said, no, nah, I just take my album and go to Koch and mm -hmm. do it that way. And 
when it is uh, uh, stepping out, and it still was a top for the song on a on an independent. Sure was. Well. But then, uh, at that time, I'm going through a divorce and shit. So I'm like, man, like a lot on your plate. Yeah, you know, I'm going through a divorce. Police involved, all kind of shit, warrants and shit. So I'm I'm leaving. I'm I'm not even really enjoying the solo shit. I'm not. I'm hating it. I'm, mm-hmm. If you listen to the album, I'm in a in a in a in a darker, dis- darker, in a dis- dark, disgruntled place. place. Yeah, I wasn't happy at all because I never wanted to be a solo artist. I think a solo artist, you have to be a certain type of mind frame, arrogant, all that kind of shit. I don't really get into that. You know mm-hmm. what I mean? So it's hard. I, I I've always been in a group, so I'm good with that. And um, I think that I came to a place where I just got angry, mm. and I didn't want to do music no more. And um, I went to L.A. And um, I met Ali just, I'm just walking up the street and Ali pulled up and was like, yo, Ali man. Shaheed Muhammad? No, no Ali. Ali, Ali uh, St. Uh, Lunatics. Oh, St. Lunatics, okay. Mm-hmm. And he was like, yo, man, me and Nelly working up here on, got a house in the hills. Let's go up there and take you and meet Nelly. And I went and met Nelly. And it was so funny about why, you know, to see Nelly again after the success. First time I met Nelly, I met N- Nelly in Sylvia Rome office. Nelly was signing his contract With on Universal. one end of the table, and Joy was signing her contract on the other end. Mm-hmm. So that's the first time I met Nelly. So after the success, he was just like, shit, Zaga, just stay with us. They the ones named me Zaga, mm-hmm. the, the St. Lunatic. Zaga, Zaga. And um, we just started doing song after song, and um, Nelly was like, man, you're going to stay with us. And next thing you know, we did grills. And um, mm-hmm. uh, Huge it, record. Huge it, it went record. crazy. Like, Huge uh, record. That's when I was like, I'm back. Yeah. I'm back. And you said you did that in one take, right? Yeah, I did that in one take <sighs> because I was just, uh, I was in a place of, uh, I got, you know, I caught the feeling again just because of being with Nelly and being away from the city. The mm-hmm. city, I think the city turned against the, the DF. Uh, you think Atlanta turned against the Dungeon Family? Yeah, definitely for me. Because he, Cassine Reed was my lawyer. Mm-hmm. <laughs> before I, he and I fired Cassine be, Reed before he became mayor of Atlanta. Yeah, I yeah. fired Cassine Reed. We fired Bernard. Yeah, like a lot of that was, you know, CeeLo and Bernard had their thing. Oh, gotcha. You, you yeah. know what I mean? So it was like when they got into power, the city turned into Jeezy land. You know what I mean? Mm-hmm. And it was all good. You so know, you, so you, you, you think. You, what you're saying is you got caught up in some of the politics. Yeah. Of um. Okay. The or poly- people like a divorce. Somebody pick cause, sides. Yeah. Because yeah. Bernard, Bernard, Bernard was Goody Mob's manager. Yes. Kasim Reed was your attorney. Yes. Bernard and Kasim best All, friends. Always. So you felt like when you fired, when they both was fired, it was like fuck these yeah. motherfuckers. And it was uh. And then Low and Bernard had beef. Yeah. Low and Bernard had beef, and um, that could have that could have ended up real bad. You know, like mm-hmm. we stopped we stopped the murder that day. Like, uh because it was like people don't understand, like Charlotte was a different animal too. <laughs> like, <laughs> hey, like that motherfucker shout out to C Lo. C Lo C Lo C Lo C Lo a different animal. Hey, like, boy. You play with him, man. He'll hey, show you something, man. Oh, he was hey, up. <laughs> hey, 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 uh new face. That that little motherfucker will beat I didn't say, hey, hey. I say, <laughs> Hey, I saw that motherfucker at one. Look, I, I got so many stories. That I saw that I motherfucker say. at one twelve. Who boy? I said I'm this. I said story. this little motherfucker will fight two, three motherfuckers. Yeah, by itself. What but about that story you were trying to tell me at the courthouse with the wars? <laughs> you know, you know, you said the two brothers were sitting next to each other, but you said about ten years ago, CeeLo and his brother, yeah, yeah. got into it at the radio station. Oh, uh, Kilo Ali. Oh, yeah. <laughs> when CeeLo I, that was so see, funny. CeeLo I was had, there. When CeeLo had to put hands on, because Kilo was out here talking reckless about I was, I was CeeLo. There. Yeah, what happened was, uh, I think, uh, you know, we brought Shot into the Dungeon family, and uh, I and think he uh, sang, and CeeLo sang. And he sang, sang so and I think like, he, he took a little something from it, and he, he kind of had a little thing, but see, one thing about Lo, he going to address it. He's not going to let you play on. with it. You know what mm. I mean? So when he said what he said, you know, I got a call. They were like, yo, Gil, you know, buddy on the radio talking crazy. And I'm just like, wow, like, here we wow. go. We ain't getting, <laughs> yeah, we yeah, ain't we saved you. We ain't put you in, in the yeah, house and put like, money in that. And now you want a disc. So then I'm just like, well, we got to go to the atrium. 
So we caught him. We caught him coming in the atrium, boy, and shoulder showed him, like, man, you really don't play with us like that. Like, like we really about put hands yeah. on oh, people. Oh, no. One, one thing know. about the goodie mob, they go stand they on what up. they say, man. You know. They go put them hands on your boy. But once again, man. It was, it was, it, <laughs> it, but it was, it was something that was um, asked for, and it was something that's, you know, they good friend now. Yeah, that was, you know, yeah. sometimes I just sometimes think, hey, sometimes so th- you gotta get people what they ask for. Man. Yeah, because I mean, like, um, uh, we we like that, man. Like, um, a lot of people had to learn that about us, um, and and that's what people, I tell people all the time, man. Like, everybody in the face was scared of Goody Mom. You know, they love Outkast. They was scared of us, though. They was they really was like, man, like y'all was a little bit more rough around the edge. Yeah, too. like yeah. we really wasn't. You know, as 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 you know, friendly as the outcast was, and um, I think that was. Do you think of, that hurt y'all when it came to the politics of the building? Um, I mean, of course, everybody, the staff go do what they do. L.A. L.A. wants to sell records and make money, but yeah. being that you all were a little rough around the edges, and like you say, might have put a little fear. You know, because let's just be real; these industry motherfuckers is hoes. They yeah. punks. Man. Yeah. Um, I think so, but my my main thing was watching Outkast go out for a year with a platinum album and just do those radio shows. I was telling people like during that time, I got Lionel, Lionel, Lionel was the man that to me started hooking up all these radio shows with all of us coming out during that time, and um, I think it was great to watch every time we went into a building that it was sold out and, you know, but it's two of them. And I'm like, bro, it's four of us. And for them ain't it. So we went against LaFace on the first album. We didn't do a promo tour. We went and did a real tour. And that tour was The Roots, The Fugees, and Goody Mob. Mm. That's a and cool. wow. we, took, we took the debt instead of going and asking for the per diem. And uh, I think that was the greatest decision we ever could have did for ourselves because it set us up as a touring band instead of a, a rap act. And let me tell you something. Once you tour, that's for life. Yeah. Story time with Legendary Jerry. I am Jerry Clark, a.k.a. The Legendary Jerry. My brother, New Face, he's always there, here. And as y'all hear and see, we got my brother, Big Gip, <laughs> Goody Mo B., so, look, let me ask you something. We're going to go back for a minute. Okay. We was talking about when CeeLo came to you and said, you know, I want to, you know, I want to do my own thing. Mm-hmm. He came to you. Mm-hmm. From that moment to the point of, and let me just say, it hurt me to see. From that moment to the point of doing an album without him and naming the album oh, One Monkey, Monkey Don't, Don't Stop No Show. show. Mm-hmm. Man, that that hurt, man. Because I was like, man, I've been watching these brothers, literally brothers, Maze High, came up together. To see that and for it to get to that point, what in between that transpired, man? Transpired for that to happen, well, man. See, well, see, let me let me let me be real with you. That slogan was not directed at CeeLo. That slogan was because Cujo had an accident and lost his leg. Yes, he did. And when Cujo lost his leg, that was the first time that we all was in a room together after the after we departed. So all four of y'all. Yes. And and Joe said the next album, no, one monkey don't stop no show, even if it's me. And his thing was, my grandmama used to say that. Mm-hmm. So he and I know that the way we presented it and everything, yeah, people feel that it way. Looked like, come on, yeah, 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 yeah. But you gotta understand, people was also upset. Also, also, we had to let even our brother know that, hey man, you gotta move in a way of uh, respect. Like, even if you do something, do it respectful. Mm-hmm. You know what I mean? Because understand, we raised you. You didn't raise us. Mm-hmm. You were a little kid when we came out. You were 16, 17 years old. We had already did a lot of things, you know, shows, you know, perform for the face as another group. A lot of things that you didn't have to do for our movement, we did. So I don't know. A lot of people took a lot of, uh, they took it to heart 
But did, at that did, time, did, 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 did CeeLo look at it like, oh, these? Oh yeah, he was dis- mad. He was mad. He came at all y'all individually, like, okay. He was upset, but um, shit, that upset made you go and create what you did. Mm-hmm. You know what I mean? Like, um, it wasn't no easy, easy play for him going solo and doing the Timberland thing because he was out of his element too. You know what I mean? Like, uh, he really couldn't be who he was in Goody Mob. He had to figure that out. So, you know, it's just great that Dave Chappelle grabbed him, put him on TV like, like 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 Lil John, and really, really looked out. And it really helped him continue to move. But um, it was funny. People don't even understand that that happened. Then we got together. And people didn't even know we was together recording a new album. Hmm. And we was over there on Monroe at his studio. And that's when we got the tracks from Danger Mouse. Hmm. And he going through a divorce now. So now, you know, you know, you go through your shit, you, you call your people. Especially a divorce. So mm-hmm. I, went through, me, I, I, I went through that shit first. Then him and his folk go start going through that. And we started, we came back together wow. and started working on the album. But then Danger Mouse sent us some tracks. And he was going through it with her or whatever. He just said, man, let me just go in here and just put my thoughts down on this song. He went in there and one take. And did that right. And crazy, that was crazy. Crazy. Damn. He sent it back to Danger Mouse. And when we woke up in the morning, he called me, he said, Gil. I said, what's up? He said, man, Danger Mouse went to the radio and played the song on the radio. It's a smash. I got to go to London. Damn. And I ain't see Low for five years. For five fucking years. Yeah. So the whole time I'm with Nelly traveling in the world, he with um, Danger Mouse. Danger Mouse. And that's uh, what, man, that's why it's so good. It's like, like I say, seeing y'all out doing shows, whether it's one music fest, whether it's wherever, because that's, that's the goody mob. Them the brothers. I'm yeah. a fucking know. Yeah. To see y'all back together like that. When did it? So after all that, you said you ain't see your brother for five years. Yeah. How all four of y'all come and sit down with y'all? Did y'all go old school in and go over to one of the houses over in East Point? <laughs> well, it was uh really started with me and CeeLo. Um, we met in New York. I came in with Nelly. He came in with Danger Mouse. We was both number ones, getting number ones from mm. uh, BMI. Mm. And I remember he walked up to me, he started fixing my... I saw I walked up to him, started fixing his tie. Mm. I hadn't seen him in five years. He was Brothers. like, damn. He was like, man, how you doing? I said, I'm good. And... um. After we saw each other, we just started talking more. And mm-hmm. um, yeah, he was like, man, I'm ready to do another album. And um, after the success of that, I got a call. He was like, yo, uh, when you come to New York, I- I'm about to do a solo album. Mm-hmm. I want you to come be with me. And I I ran, I, I left Nelly them after me and Ali. Me and Ali, we dropped, we did. Uh, Ken Folk. We did some great shit with Nelly, man. Like, Nelly took care of Gip. Sweat Suit came out. Did Shout eight, out to Nelly. Did 8 million. Damn. Um, we did 8 million on Sweat Suit. Then we came back and did a Dirty NT label uh, album. That went gold. Then we did Grills. Then uh, then me and Ali came with our album, uh, Kinfolk. And then that's when I left and I uh, went to New York, met Lowe. And he was signing a new solo deal with uh, Atlantic, mm-hmm. Craig Cowman. And, uh, man, after that, it, it took off for him all over again. Man. Yeah. Took off for him so all over. So when you came with the idea, you you called, you called T-Mo and you called Cujo and said, hey, look, man, I talked to, my, talked to our brother. Yeah. We, we ready to do it and what they say. They said, let's go. They were, they, they were ready to go. Um, you know, um, being with Lowe at that time was just so crazy because we working on the the Lady Killer album and um you know Atlantic like yo man you know we've been in LA for a time it's time for us to go and get this album done give I was like okay we go to the studio this is the first time we meet Bruno Mars hmm. we walk in the studio and he playing that record fuck you when I first walked in I heard it, I said Lo it's a smash but oh, that shit is fucking smash it's a smash Lo. Lo said, man, I hate that goddamn record. <laughs> <laughs> that record. Hey, see, Lo, you was wrong on that one, boy. That record was hey, a fucking look, smash. He said, he said, man, I hate that motherfucking record. Fuck that shit. And he got so upset, he just said, fuck it. 
I'm going to just go in here and freestyle. He went in there and freestyled them verses. Mm. Damn. So those verses that you hear on Fuck You, that was him being mad that he had to do the song. We woke up in the morning, that motherfucker was a smash, smash. all over the world. All over. And I was like, bro, like, this is crazy. We went around the world again with him. And um, boom, man, we, uh, this boy overnight become the biggest shit ever. We go overseas, we do the voice. Mm. And um, we come back, Saturday Night Live wanted him to come to Saturday Night Live. First time he on Saturday Night Live. We go and do that. And Mark Burnett was in the audience that night. Hmm. The owner of Survivor and the voice and everything. He came backstage. He said, would you like to be on TV? He said, sure, I don't care. He called us. We went to L.A. Now, this is just you and CeeLo. Mm-hmm. Okay. And um, that's when I realized the game of politics. That's when I realized the game gets dirty <laughs> once you get up to a certain level. Because this is when... Being on Atlantic at the time, this is when this 360 deal started being put into the faces of the artists. Mm-hmm. First person that got this shit was T Pain. He was like, nah, mm-hmm. I ain't signing it. I'm doing that. Lupe was next. Lupe, mm-mm, I ain't signing it. They came to Low and um, they told Low not to do the voice. <laughs> And at that time, Blue Williams was with us. Shout out Michael Blue Williams. Yeah, Blue said. Mr. Manager. Blue said, damn that. We doing the voice. Smartest and, move ever made. And that shit turned into a phenomenon, bro. Like, the man went diamond in TV. You know That what I mean? quick. I'm oh. talking about, we went from doing the voice at Prince Club in the parking lot. The Prince, Prince Club, which was empty at the time, uh, that's our dressing rooms, and yeah. we're doing the actual TV show in the parking lot. And we went from in the parking lot, downtown L.A., to the next season being on Paramount, $15, $18 million production a day. Shit, man. So I, I got to see the difference between music money and movie and that, money. And boy, that, <laughs> TV, TV, that money. TV movie money. Get, get. <laughs> and, uh, hey, that, well, my brother did good that year. He did about I know he million. did. And then does, does this lead into the Against the Machine album? Yes. That leads into that That's, album, That right? goes into the Age, Age Against the Machine album. Uh, we we do that album out there. It's kind of hard. Low doing TV all day, going in the studio. He tired at night. And um, that's when TBS come to us and say, yo, y'all want to do a CeeLo Green takes over Vegas, a Vegas show. And uh, then we got a TV show on TBS. And uh, we stayed out in Vegas. And recorded that Age Against the Machine album. And uh, we got a lot of flack for that. You know what I mean? Mm-hmm. Like, you know, Charlotte was like, oh, we're going to put very first white girl on the Goody Mom album? Okay. Yeah. Like, but Bruno wrote it. Yep. And I'm just like, all right, all right. I don't, rock. How, I don't know how our fans going to take it. But hey, you Dang know. Like- <laughs> <laughs> I was like, hey, hey what you say, Gip? It's a, hey, like, <laughs> you know well, I mean? hey. So you got to understand me calling back home to organize noise, like, and boy, like, what the fuck? What is this? Very first white girl. Is that what we're doing? I'm just like, bro, like, I mean, TV land. I mean, hey, man, I know. know. Hey, man, look. <laughs> <laughs> it's a new day. Yeah, like, love hey, Rico Ray, man. Like, it's a new day, like, man. Like, yo, what's going on? I'm like, yo, bro, like, we brought KP in to try and help us put the album together. Um, Janelle Monet was on the record. Did very well with the Janelle Monae Monae record. It's, it did very well for us. We did TV and everything. Yeah, him being just on TV at that time helped Goody Mob as a group. As a yeah. Goody Mob reestablish us yeah. back into the actual industry at a certain level because of where he was sitting at. Story time with the legendary Jerry's hosted by me, the one and only. Jerry Clark. Music has been provided by July, the producer. If you haven't already, please, please make sure you subscribe to Storytime with the legendary Jerry on YouTube and wherever you listen to podcasts. And make sure you follow us on all social media platforms at the legendary Jerry podcast. 
For more podcasts from iHeartMedia, visit the iHeartRadio app, Apple Podcasts, or wherever you listen to your favorite shows. 